Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome, welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest is a leading cardiologist and then it changes. Do you know in the operating room, he prays for the dead and they come back? Do you know that in the operating room, God tells them what to do and it saves people's lives? That's my kind of doctor. Dr. Crandall, uh, you worked for three hospitals, uh, but th there was a very profound moment in your life. You're 19, you're uh, an intern, and, you're, uh, and, and someone you know dies. What effect did it have on you? Well, you know, Sid, this was the first time that I had really witnessed death. And as a young man, I entered that autopsy room, and there was this gentleman that I had known for many months that was dead on the table. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. His whole insides were emptied, in fact. And what happened was, Sid, that it made me think that there is something else to life. That life with all its order and complexity doesn't just end when we die. Something must move on ahead. And it was the first time that I really ever thought about God in heaven. Now, you heard the audible voice of God to tell you to be praying for your patients. Tell me exactly what happened. Well, you know, this was uh, one day I was walking down the hospital ward on the basement, and I had been praying for people, but it seemed like many of the people weren't receptive, and I was concerned. So I cried out to God for three months for an answer to the prayer, Lord, send me the people group you want me to pray for. And what I did that morning, I pressed the elevator button to go up. I prayed that prayer again, Lord, send me your people group that I can pray for, that are receptive. And I heard the voice of God. And the voice of God said this, your people group are your patients, Dr. Crandall. I've sent them to you, and I haven't sent them to anyone else. And he also, the Lord also said, if you don't pray to bring them into the kingdom of God, no one else will. And it wow. changed my life. Now I knew that I could pray for my patients and for the sick on the hospital wards, and it would be covered by Almighty God. You know, uh, I would think... In the, in the culture we're in now, that it would last like 10 seconds and you would be kicked out. Well, it, you know, it, I went undercover in the beginning, to tell you the truth. <laughs> and, uh, but as I started to pray, Sid, I saw miracles. Tell me about one of your first ones, Earl. Er, well, Earl was a heart transplant patient. He had been on the waiting list for months and months. He was in ICU. There was no way we could get him a heart. And he was dying before our eyes. But I read in my Bible, Sid, that we could pray for the sick in the name of Jesus and that they could recover. I had never prayed for anyone like that before. And I walked into that room with Earl, who was depressed, who was down and out, and in fact, who was dying. And I said, Earl, in my Bible, 
It says that we can pray for the sick and they can be healed in Jesus' name. I will pray for you. Excuse me, were you trembling a little bit on the inside? Yes, I was. I was nervous. <laughs> I had never prayed for anyone like that. I had never stepped out and prayed for like someone like that. But I prayed with Earl. We held hands. It was a simple prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to heal Earl in Jesus' name. And that man that couldn't lift his head off the pillow for three months, within a couple days, he was lifting his head off the pillow. And then a couple days more, he was sitting on the side of the bed. And within many weeks, he left that hospital, Sid, without the need of a heart transplant. And he was healed. I told you, he's my kind of doctor. There were, there's another one that is, I mean, there are too many to talk about. But Jeff, who was flatlined. That means dead, dead. Tell me yes. about Jeff. Well, this was, you know, one day I, I didn't feel like a, a godly person. I was in the middle of work. I was working and a massive heart attack patient came in, uh, Jeff Markin. And they worked on him in the emergency room for over 40 minutes. And then they Where? called me uh, to come and respond. But as I was walking there, I said, you know, this man is going to be a dead man. He's been gone for 40 minutes. And I arrived at the emergency room, Sid, and it was like chaos. It was an operating room full of chaos, trying to bring life into this man, but there was no life left. And I went over the protocol uh, with the senior physician and we reviewed everything and we decided that everything had been done. And even if we brought this man back, he would be brain dead. So we declared him dead. Everyone left the room except one nurse. She was preparing the body for the morgue. I finished my notes, and as I walked out of that room, Sid, I heard the voice of God say, turn around and pray for that man. And I said, Lord, that can't be you. I can't, I can't pray for a dead man. And I kept walking, but the voice of the Lord came back a second time, Sid, turn around and pray for that man. So I walked back to the room. I stood over the body. The nurse looked at me like, why are you here? The head of the body was here. The feet were here. I prayed. I was going to pray, but I didn't know what to pray. The Holy Spirit took over. And as I looked down at that body and put my hands on his torso, these words came out of my mouth. Father God, I cry out for this man's soul. If he does not know you as Lord and Savior, raise him from the dead now in the name of Jesus. And as I said that prayer, I stepped backwards. My arm went up in the air as to praise the Lord. The other emergency room doctor walked in. What are you doing? Why are you still here? I said, I am praying for this man. And I looked at the emergency room doctor. I said, shock this body one more time. He said, no, shock. impossible. I said, shock him. And he went over, he grabbed those paddles on that corpse. He let out the electricity and an instant perfect heartbeat came back. So. Uh, you just heard about Jeff, who was flatlined, dead, dead. But what you didn't hear is what he saw on the other side. What did he report to you? Well, you know, as soon as Jeff woke up three days later, he accepted the Lord as Savior. But he had the most amazing story. And I kept asking him, where were you that day that I was praying over your body? And he said, I, I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed. He said, I was worth nothing. I was in total darkness forever and ever. And these men came in and they threw me in the trash. I was worth nothing to anyone. He was in hell. But that day he accepted Jesus as Christ and Lord, his savior. But he also told me that during that time that he was gone, that there were ministering angels, Sid, that were over him, helping him in the intensive care unit, ministering to him and bringing life into his body. Tell me about the man where the glory cloud came in. Yes, this was amazing. This was a, another gentleman that came in with a massive heart attack. And he was crying out. 
He was in so much pain, Sid. It was like he was entering hell. I had never seen a, a man scream with pain. The agony of his pain was like someone cu cutting off his leg. Mm. And when we couldn't control the pain and we were working on him and I stepped back from the operating room table and I prayed, Lord, life into this man. I pray for this man, Lord. And the Lord said, tell him to cry on my name for my mercy. So I stepped back up. I tried to do the procedure. I couldn't because of the pain, the screaming, the agony that he was in. And all of a sudden I looked at him and I said, my brother, you're dying. Cry on the name of Jesus now. My brother, cry on the name of Jesus now. You're dying. And all of a sudden, this man on his back on the operating room table cried out to God, Jesus, I need your mercy, Lord. Jesus, I need your mercy, Lord. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit descended through the ceiling as if like a cloud encompassed that man, his whole body. All of a sudden, life came into him. Color came into him. The pain left him, Sid. I could think clearly. I entered into his heart. I opened the artery, and that man is alive today because wow. he called on the name of Jesus. Based on your study of the Word, your experiences that you've had, what has God shown you heaven is like? In heaven, from the experiences that I have had with patients, is a place of total peace and love. You will see your family there, Sid, if they are believers in Christ. I just had a woman that reported the other day that when she passed, she met her mother in heaven. And not only her mother, her dog was there, too, that had passed. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I, we have I mean, a lot of pet lovers okay. here, I can tell. <laughs> but, that, but I've had other patients that said, there are the streets of gold. And they're surrounded by flowers that are more brilliant than any color that you or I could imagine. That there are rivers, clear rivers. A woman reported... My son was swimming in a clear river with other children. It was the river of God. There were fish in the river. There were children. They were laughing. They were playing. They were splashing. And then suddenly that, that vision shifted that there were children running in a field with Jesus. It's glorious. It's all the promises that we look for in heaven. From this life, we just gently take one step into the heavenlies and we're with Jesus said. You told me about a crisis in your life. And if you don't mind, uh, you had a son yes. uh, that uh, developed, I believe it was cancer. Yes. Um, and it had a profound influence on where you are today. Tell me about it did. that. You know, my son, his name was is Chad, and he became very sick at age 11. And we had to put him in the hospital, and he wasn't doing well. And he was dying, Sid. And all of a sudden, one day, a glory cloud appeared outside the hospital window, a cloud full of thunder and lightning, the presence of God. It came to the hospital. It shook the building. And I said, no, Lord, not today, not my son today, Lord. And all of a sudden, my son took his last breath. I held that body in my arms and I cried over him and I became angry and upset with God, said. I said, why this? You have more power. You have power over death. You can bring my child back. And his mother it was in the room. She said, do you feel the peace? I said, no, I don't feel the peace. His twin brother was in the room. Do you feel the peace, dad? I said, no, I don't feel the peace. I want my son. And all of a sudden, I became angry with God. And I said, Lord, I am going to turn away from you. I don't want you if it comes to this. And as I rocked that body for an hour and a half in my arms, Sid, I cried out to God for an explanation. And then suddenly 
I reflected over my last four years and saw that God was there with every step. And I said, I made my decision, God, I will follow you. But for the death of my son, I want a million souls for the kingdom of God in Jesus name. And, And that's what drives you today. That's what drives me. And my understanding is his son right this moment, perhaps, is looking over the balcony of Mm. heaven and saying, go, Dad, this is for both of us. Mm. Go, Dad. Mm -hmm. Tell me something about what's coming uh, in in, in your ministry now. Uh, Do you travel? Do you see miracles? Do you see souls coming to the Lord? Tell me. Well, we travel. You know, we're traveling with Reinhard Bunke right now for the most part. Jesus said... It is finished. And that means, in the Greek, paid in full. 